BMW's strategy for pure electric cars is, how can I put it, a bit confusing. So they started out with the BMW i3, which was completely bespoke. It had a carbon tub and divisive styling. It was like nothing we'd ever seen before. We then had to wait eight whole years for their next effort, which was the X3, where they ripped out the diesel engine and plonked a big battery in its place. I might be underselling it a bit there because we actually really like that car. But now there's this, the BMW iX. And it's as if BMW have gone full circle because it's a proper dedicated electric car with its own platform and really impressive tech. Now that's all well and good, but since it was released, all people seem to be talking about is the way that it looks. A little piggy, perhaps. Big piggy, more like. Anyway, that's enough of my styling descriptions. What we really want to know is whether this is the ultimate electric SUV. Hit that thumbs up button and I'll tell you. The iX is BMW's electric flagship. It's designed to wrap up all of the company's zero emissions know-how into one all-encompassing do-it-all package. At launch, there are two trims, Sport and M Sport, as well as two batteries to choose from, corresponding to an official range of between 249 and 373 miles. Prices are high, starting from just under £70,000. This one, even with the smaller battery, is closer to 82,000 as tested, and it has some pretty fancy features, such as the glass panoramic sunroof, 22-inch wheels, electric sport seats, and laser headlights. We did say that this was BMW's tech flagship, and it's stuff like that that's proof. As is everything in here, we've both complimented and criticised BMW for being a bit familiar, but in here it feels fresh, funky and minimalist. It's like everything we know and love, but with a 2022 stamp on it. Mm, this squared off shaped steering wheel won't be for everyone's taste but you don't really notice it in normal use and it does give you a good view of the fully digital instrument cluster behind. Probably the biggest departure from what we know and love is the removal of the climate controls and buttons from up here. They're now all hidden away in this 14.9 inch touchscreen. But all is not lost because you can adjust the heating via voice control and all the other bits and bobs can be accessed through the familiar iDrive controller. It's all very responsive and the graphics are super crisp, but there's no avoiding the fact that the sheer amount of icons, functions, submenus can feel a bit overwhelming at first, especially if you're trying to use them on the move. Speaking of which, shall we see if the iX feels as futuristic to drive as it is to look at? The two batteries correspond to the two different models on offer, the 322 brake horsepower X-Drive 40 and the 516 brake horsepower X-Drive 50. As well as offering a bit more power, the 50 also gets a bigger battery and faster charging. Prices take a hike too, you're looking at an extra £24,000 over the basic car. Sport cars come with 21-inch alloy wheels, the two screens and an 18-speaker Harman Kardon sound system, as well as BMW safety systems like Parking Assistant and Driving Assistant Professional. The M Sport spec is an extra three grand, but most of that goes on trim add-ons and some beefier brakes. Really though, if you're weighing up the two models and wondering whether you'll appreciate all that extra shove, you really don't need it. This entry-level X-Drive 40 we've got here will do 0 to 62 miles per hour in 6.1 seconds, so it's certainly not short on pulling power. The real reason you'll want to step up for most people will be the prospect of being able to do 300 miles between charges. But if we remove that from the equation for a second, to drive, this thing defies physics. 
It weighs more than 2.5 tonnes, but less said about that the better. Thing is, the batteries are mounted so low that the centre of gravity isn't as high as you might expect. And the result is a car that's surprisingly fun to drive. With the dampers set to sport, the iX controls its weight well and successfully limits the amount of roll you get in corners. The iX50 comes with rear wheel steering, which does wonders for agility, but even without it, the way the iX handles is seriously impressive. The steering isn't full of feedback, but it is at least pinpoint perfect, so you can position the car exactly where you want it, which is important when it's as wide as this thing is. You'll probably be able to see from our tracking shots that I'm hovering near the white line a bit, which you seem to do a lot of in one of these things. Elsewhere, refinement is excellent. If you dial back the dampers into comfort, then it manages to smooth out bumps and even disguise pretty big potholes. It's impressive. As we mentioned earlier, how quickly you can charge your iX depends on which model you go for. But even the basic iX xDrive 40 manages to match the best cars in this segment thanks to the standard fit 150 kilowatt charging. The iX xDrive 50 boosts that to 200 kilowatts, which aside from models fitted with the latest 800 volt charging tech like the Kia EV6 and the Audi e-tron GT, it's pretty much as quick as they come. Both models will manage a 10 to 80% charge in a little over half an hour, but those faster charging speeds mean more miles per minute in the xDrive 50. Beware though, that bigger battery means charging from a 7 kilowatt home wall box takes almost 17 hours, or more than two days on a three pin plug. When it comes to real world range, you're looking at around 200 miles in the xDrive 40 and comfortably closer to 300 in the xDrive 50. What doesn't change depending on the model you go for is practicality. The boot is a good size, it's not gargantuan like the Tesla Model X's or the Audi e-trons, but it's perfectly usable. You can fold the seats down with the push of a button, and when everything is flat, you get 1,750 litres. Plus, there's space for the charge cables underneath. And what's this? A tow bar on an electric car? Yeah you can pull two and a half tons with this thing. So the iX is rated pretty highly for towing. And given the performance, I imagine you wouldn't even feel towing something like a caravan or a horse box until you looked at the range that is, which I imagine would drop like a stone. And I also imagine all the faff when you come to a charger, unhitch, plug in. I don't know, I might be wrong. Maybe we'll see a load of these lined up at Ascot next year, who knows? Fold those seats back up, manually, unfortunately, and you'll find there's plenty of space in the back. Adults can stretch out no matter where they're sitting, with a generous amount of both leg and headroom in the rear. There's also a completely flat floor, so space for your feet. I'll be honest, I didn't think I'd love the BMW iX as much as I do. Many of these big, heavy, relatively inefficient SUVs, I'm thinking Mercedes EQC, Audi e-tron and the like, feel as if they've already had their day. But the iX is different. Yes, it's still big, and yes, it's still heavy, and yes, it's still relatively inefficient, but it's quiet, it's comfortable, it's sharp to drive, packed with the most cutting edge tech, and it can tow, don't you know? But seriously, if you can get past that slightly questionable styling and seriously high price tag, then there's a really talented electric car under the metal. Come on, BMW, don't make us wait another eight years next time. Head to drivingelectric.com for the latest electric car advice, news and reviews. And make sure to check us out on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Before you go, make sure you subscribe and don't forget to click the bell icon to be notified when the next video goes live.